Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halen RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And I got a question for you. Are you down with RDB? Specifically, the rear double bunk Cherokee Alpha Wolf. This is, it's sort of like if the 287BH Arctic Wolf and the 29TE or Tedward Edward Gray Wolf had a baby. So you got a living room super slide, a triple entry bathroom with doors off the bedroom, hallway, and exterior for, you know, cut the dirt kind of access. Um, but it's got a, a totally private rear, uh, in a way, almost kind of like double queen bed-ish sort of arrangement. There's two big, big beds back there. And that's kind of what I like about this one. Uh, a lot of times the single bunks that are out there, they're a little too small for even teenagers. This thing, I think, could be a really good adult size sleeper. I could see you stuffing four to six grown-ups in this thing just fine, which I think is awesome where, like, let's say you're grandpa and grandma, and occasionally your kids and their kids all come with you. This is one rig that could work for all that. I don't think that's going to be the primary person for this. I'm just saying it's a flexible rig. It's, it's family style all day. Or because there's nothing under the bunks, it's just pure storage. If you wanted to, you could take those bunks out Man, this thing could be one awesome rolling mobile office. What do you think about that? If you like little ideas like that, little left to center thoughts, hit subscribe, follow along. Let's get inside here, because this is a good looking rig. Smartly equipped and never quite overdone is what you're gonna find in here. Like overall, the colors are light and bright. You know, it's, it's ventless flooring, it's easy to upkeep. But your seating areas, especially here in a bunkhouse, they're always going to be darker. Uh, this is the this is the only decor that they offer, by the way, just in case you were curious. But it makes sense. You know, the areas that would show a little bit of wear and tear tend to be uh, darker and, and less obvious. The areas that are, uh, you know, lighter and brighter make everything look a little more open and airy. Of course, the big super slide over here directly across from the entertainment center uh, that certainly doesn't hurt uh, either. Now, this RV um, doesn't actually come with a television. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm guessing about a 40 inch could be put on that wall. They have a, a TV option, but something that we've found here is, you know, we can get you a better TV or larger or whatever for the same or less money from the manufacturer. This isn't just a pantertainment center. This is a walk-in Hide and seek champion pantertainment center here. Nice big deep shelves, big space, and I like how tall they are. So like if you got big pictures, uh, my friends down south make me some sweet tea, something like that, you actually got a place for it. Now um, over here, like you see how the walls are a little bit barren. It's kind of nice though in the way that it allows you to maybe like put a, a broom hanger or something like there, some extra coat hangers. And then you're gonna, I guarantee you, do what I always do with these. I, the, the knob doesn't twist, it's because it's a, a magnet. I twist that knob every single time. Why wouldn't you? Why is, why is it a door knob? You're supposed to twist door knobs. Like everything I know is a lie. Is it just me? It's just me, isn't it? Okay, okay, never mind. Um, by the way, larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner on these. Now I just cruised past it real fast, but that is a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Down here, this is all sealed edge countertop stuff. I like the easy reach outlets though. I think they did that well because the side wall with the window is laminated, very, very hard to run outlets. But this wall right here is just a, a constructed partition wall, just there to kind of help define room A from room B, especially important when the bathroom is on the other side of that. You don't want a viewing window right there. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, easy reach outlets where they really matter. That's a nice touch. There are some extra outlets under that overhead cabinet there, by the way, you see by the window. I'm gonna do a better job of trying to point those out this year. I, I usually fail in the past because I'm tall. I don't see them, I don't think about it. Now behind the stove, you may have noticed previously that cutting board cover, and I pulled the sink cover off there. I don't think that's how you're gonna use them. I'm just letting you see that they're totally free floating. You got that black stainless sink right there. Down here, they do this a lot. I think they're kind of trying to protect the plumbing. And if there are any owners out there of an Alpha Wolf uh, 30 RDB, please leave me a comment and chime in. Is there anything behind that partition? Could it be moved? Could it be changed a little bit to, le to make some wastebasket space? I think that would be nice. I do like, though, the drawers are all plywood. They're not particle board with a sticker wrap. And that's, that's what I'm saying, you know? The stuff that really, really matters. They do really well here. Giant full extension drawers there. And below the sofa. That is an area right there. 
a lot of people don't realize is a big storage opportunity. You know what I kind of miss though? Some of the older travel trailers like Wildwood used to do this. When the front of that flopped down for just easier access. I always like that. And like its Grey Wolf cousin, this thing has a, a large triple entry bathroom. The hiccup with it is I never, I never really know how to go about it. I got three points of attack. It's an indefensible position. That's a, you know, that's just, that's just bad strategy. Of course, we're not playing Risk or Stratego or anything like that. I, I mean, legroom for days. Legroom for days is, uh, I, I, I asked Siri and she's like, it's got legroom for days. And I'm like, Siri, what happened to your voice? She's like, I have a cold. I'm like, uh-oh. Anyway, um, that, that didn't happen. I'm making stuff up. Now, uh, the RV is six and a half foot tall inside. Now, it's it's a radius shower, which I don't mind. It gives me uh, enough elbow room. I know some folks have said, eh, it doesn't work for me. My head will be in the shower when I'm standing in that. But once again, when I get out, I mean, it's nice. I'm, I'm kind of a klutz. Like, you guys don't see this because I'm behind the camera, but like, my shins, my knees, they're always gouged up from doing these videos. I'm always opening stuff, closing stuff, banging stuff. Uh, I'm always cracking my head on things because I don't have hair for an early warning detection system. And I, I talk about this all the time, but manufacturers, I know you watch these videos. 100% of every single customer really likes this, this full window that you put here in the door. Also, 100% of every customer doesn't want the neighbors looking at them while they're walking out of the shower. We would really like it if that had a factory shade. Now, if you're watching this and that kind of spooks you and freaks you out a little bit, Give us a call here at Halet RV. Those shades are an easy thing for us to plop on. Now, kind of like, I don't mind pointing out some potential points of concern like that. This bedroom, uh, I mean, this trailer, you know, it's one slide, but it's long. If you uh, double check the specs at the beginning of the video, and I also leave those in the video description for you, she is long, she's strong, and she's down to get the camping on. But they had to really squish down this bedroom. Like, you notice... You're doing the butt scoop buggy around the bed. Now, it doesn't bother me so much because remember, you do have a door direct over here. So going around the foot of the bed, not a major concern for me, but it is a camp queen. And if you put a true queen in here, you're going to squish it right up against the wall. It is nice, though, that at least they give you that option. They left you just enough room. But they didn't leave you any more than that. Now, on a similar note, I actually, I meant to point this out uh, sooner when we got in, but I I, I don't script. I, I never know where this RV is going to take me, and it didn't take me where I normally would go, if that makes any sense. Um, not every window opens for airflow. Like the, op uh, the, the window beside the sofa there, it doesn't open for airflow. And something that is actually a little interesting to me is how that window does not have a mate over here on this side of the slide. Logically to me, if I'm coming in from the main entry door, I would at least think that's the side of the slide I would want the window on. I would, I don't know. I would rather almost either have two breeze windows or like no windows at all. And so it's, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just me. I, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Am I just overthinking it? That feels right to me. Um, what else was I going to show you? Oh. Uh, yeah, sleeper capacity, because we're coming back here into the bunk room. The sofa can fold down. Uh, the dinette is a true U dinette, so that's like a big seven-foot sleeper. And I might lose a couple of you here with these zebra shades. Some people love them. Some people don't. I don't mind them. I actually rather enjoy them, but they're not everyone's cup OT. I do like the very pretty-looking hardware they're using for that sliding bunk privacy door, though. And over here, our kind of master command center is all right by the entry door, which is nice. You don't have to go trucking through the RV to get to it. Um, but this is new. You see how that lights up? It's motion activated. It's the Cherokee Total Control System. Uh, so it's cool that you can just walk up and push your inside or outside light buttons or whatever. You can also Bluetooth to this and, and use it wirelessly if you want. But it's cool that we still just have buttons. And since it activates when you walk in, if it's, if it's late and the kids are sleeping, and you're stumbling in, maybe you had one too many, you don't gotta, you know, slap all over the wall. Now, you might notice that wall. Let's acknowledge this. The wall, it moves under my hand. It's because it's not drywall, guys. It's just Luan partitions. That's pretty normal in every RV. I get that it, it looks like, oh, oh no, when you when you touch it. That's that's no different than, than any other camper. You just happen to see it this time. It's kind of one of those, we don't, talk about it often so we don't I, don't, I don't know, it needs to be discussed maybe more, I don't know. 
Now, when we get back here, this is the 287 Arctic Wolf bunkhouse every day of the week. These are, I don't know the exact size of that mattress. I really should measure that up. But it's almost like double camp queens. This thing almost has like a, a, a triple queen bed capacity. And you might have noticed that ladder up there. Well, one of the cool things about that is you don't got to throw anybody into the upper bed. But notice on that, uh, that like partition wall, there's also household and USB outlets there for you. Now, uh, for entertainment purposes, there are TV hookups in here. And this wouldn't be a bad candidate, actually, for a ceiling-mounted uh, television, which with the uh, wood uh, truss rafters is not a hard thing to do. But it's the storage back here. There's some serious storage space, some heavy alliteration, as my uh, you know college prep English teacher would have said. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Forrester, by the way, for helping me gain... I would say mastery, or at least proficiency in the English language, but the way I boggle words up all the time, I bet I bet you're like, please, please don't tell people I'm the one that educated you. <laughs> now, turning around here, you see the uh, TV hookups on the bedroom wall, and if we take a second to close up the slide out to see what she has for travel access, you'll see one of the big reasons that this RV has two entry doors, because with that super slide closed, you're most definitely not passing through this direction. But again, we've got double entry doors. So if we slide to the left and then slide to the right and everybody clap your hands, we can get back here into the living area, um, the, uh, the kitchen, but not the bunks. This is on a roller door, but the door is just all the way back there. That's really the only thing you lose access to. And I, I suppose the kitchen drawers over there, but if you do need to stop and just make a sandwich, you gotta just throw some totes in, you gotta make a potty stop. It has some travel function, not full, but not bad. Now I would say it's the little things they do, but this is a big pass-through storage compartment under that front bed. On the left up there, by the way, was the battery disconnect switch and the, uh, the charge controller for the Cherokee juice pack option that we've applied to this one. That's a solar battery, kind of tender. They either come in 50 or 100 watt varieties, depending on what's optioned on the RV at the time. She's slide out awning ready. And I, I tell you what, I'm drinking my hand under the awning ready right now. It is a hot day, and I am not complaining about this, but we have been getting absolutely hammered with new RV inventory, which I'm very glad to see. I'm very thankful for because there's been severe shortage problems through the industry for a while. But all of that lined up with the new 22s coming in. Like you see back there, I have just a whole string of things I got to record, and I'm kind of a one-man band. So drinking my hand under the awning sounds good. But you know what looks good is this thing. They have always had just an amazing aesthetic on these right here. Now notice, you've got that uh, you know glass view entry door in the bathroom there. Again, I definitely throw a shade on that one. But you've got the same treatments going on the back door over here, both of which are very nicely covered by the awning, by the way. That's one of the things I really like about this floor plan. On a rainy day, it doesn't really, like you still have it's, it's like a house party. You gotta have a good flow, you know? It's been a long time since I was at a house party. Last time I had a house party, I think it was when we threw my daughter a SpongeBob birthday. That being said, that party was lit! <laughs> SpongeBob and Patrick, ah, oh, those guys know how to tear it up. We've got outside TV hookups over here. I like that the speakers, they're, they're not all the way up to, uh, you know, the sky level. I usually like them down a little bit lower in the skirting, but that's not bad. That's still at my campsite. That's not blowing away the neighbors. Now, under that corner kitchen counter, they used uh, a very typical Cherokee mini camp kitchen over here. Now, full admission, that is a dump sink, obviously not a plumbed sink, but you know, that's also not a bad place. If you can find an appropriately sized wastebasket, that's a really good place to put an outdoor wastebasket. Obviously, you gotta get it out of the way to slide the thing shut. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm just saying it can be useful um depending on what you're doing outside a little mini fridge uh that ice maker by the way is legit uh as long as you got electricity and you got water and you pretty much you know you got water here anytime you want spray the kids off by the way if uh uh if you want to see if you're still in track and field shape what you can do with that sprayer hose there because that's cold water only is uh wait wait till uh the uh, the lady of the house fellas is nice and comfortable in her chair she's got her favorite drink in her hand then give her a, a a good healthy uh you know cold shower 
and then literally run for your life because that's exactly what's about to have uh, happen. <laughs> and this is where I'm seeing under the beds, there's just, there's not stuff in the way. This is where something like the 29 TE Gray Wolf would have uh, a camp kitchen. And there's nothing wrong with that. They have a huge camp kitchen, bigger than this one. But this one, instead, has larger outside storage. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. When I say all the time how every RV is the best in a different way, they all have these good qualities. That's the stuff I'm referring to. Uh, all of your Cherokee family have those LCI Insight backup cameras standard on these. Uh, we have optioned two things on this, the rear cargo rack and the spare tire. Normally, I would have optioned also a ladder onto this. Due to some supply challenges, uh, they are not able to offer ladders at the time of this filming. Maybe down the line that'll become available. It doesn't sound like it's going to happen anytime soon. The RV though, thankfully, is still structured to accept a ladder. So if you want to get up to that walkable roof, check your seals and do some maintenance and cleaning, you can do that. This is also, I think, brilliant. It's, uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. Sometimes it doesn't have to be shiny. Just throwing all the hookups over here with a full outside shower, which is nice. So you got a sprayer port and an outside shower and a bath direct entry door. But just putting all the hookups back here in one spot. It just, it makes more sense. It's simple. It's easy. That being said, I don't want to, the, the way that I phrase that, I, I don't want to give you the, the wrong impression. The sewer outlet hookup, that is up here because that is as close to the uh, bathroom as it can get. But what's cool is you do only have one outlet uh, and you have two gray tanks. So that's one of the reasons this one has a larger gray capacity. You have a gray tank dedicated to the kitchen and then one dedicated to the bathroom, along obviously with the black tank dedicated to the bathroom. So if you're like me and you're down with RDB, you give us a call here at Halet RV. I wasn't trying to do that. It just worked out, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> we're family owned and operated. I'm a dork. We just have fun because that's what camping's supposed to be about. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So when you're ready, we're ready. Until then, uh, leave us a couple comments. Let us know what you like about this one. Any questions you have or something you might change and give us a call. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Hey, everybody. Josh, the RV nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And, 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 Huh. <sighs>